So in today's episode, I'm going to go through the process of how I create junk journal pages. So stay tuned. All right, so I am on the Canva homepage and for the junk journal, basically you need to decide what size you want to create. For this tutorial, I'm going to create junk journal pages that are eight and a half by 11 inches. So I'm just going to go over to custom size and I'm going to make sure that the units of measurement is inches and then I'm going to type in eight and a half by 11 but you can type in any um, width and height that you like, and you can use any units. I'm gonna go ahead and select the purple button to create my new design. And what I'm gonna get is a blank workspace. Now, to get started on this design, I'm gonna go into elements and I'm going to search for vintage items. So for example, I will search for some vintage paper. And I'll go into graphics and we can place any type of these designs that we want. I'm gonna start with this example right here and I'm gonna place this on my workspace. Now, if you don't mind seeing the white edges all the way around, you can also set this image as your background, but you'll see a little bit of white on the uh, edges. So I'm going to leave this like this for now. And in the next example, I'll show you how you can crop those white edges out. But this is what I'm starting with right now. Now, you'll always want to have a theme of what you want to put on the page. So for my first example, I'm going to search for vint vintage cups. And I'll just place this item on my workspace for now. And I'm going to go back into my search bar here. And again, I'm going to search for some torn paper because I want to start layering elements. And I'll grab this here, and I'll just turn that around like that. And I'll just place that on the side here and just make it a little bit larger like that. And I'll again, I'll just move it off to the side like that. And I'm also going to grab this right here and I'm going to turn that around and then I'm going to flip it like that and I'm just going to put that in down here like that. Now you might have to recrop these like this and let's search for some uh, tea, tea bags. Maybe something like that, that looks vintage. And I'll just put that like that. And we can go over to position and layers and move that teacup all the way up in front of that little newspaper corner there. Now let's add some more vintage paper, things that are more like uh, notes. So let's go into graphics. And let's add this right here. And we can add that right there. Now, if you find that the elements that you're placing on your workspace are too dark, you always have the option to turn down the transparency so they're not so opaque. Okay, so that is also an option. You can do the same thing with the teacups. I'm just going to see if we can find a few more elements to place on um, this workspace. And I'm just going to grab that and just make that a little bit smaller. And we'll just add that as well right here. 
Now you can keep going, uh, layering items one after another. I'm actually going to look for a, a tea pot. And I'll place this one on my workspace. I'm going to flip it the other way. And I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller like that and place it right like that. And if you want to readjust the elements, you can do that as well. If you think that some of them are too big, you can definitely make them smaller and you can add your own flair to the designs as well. All right, so that is one option right there. I'm going to add another page and we're going to try something a little bit different. For this design, I'm going to search for vintage paper. And this time, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the color of this paper. Now, I know that up here um, we don't have a choice to change the color, um, but I'm going to go ahead and go into edit and I'm going to go into duotone and I'll go into custom and I want to change it to a kind of like a lime uh, green. Now, if there is something here already that's like a lime green, this might work here. Uh, maybe I'll try that. It's called mint chocolate and it's part of Duotone. So I'm going to make that a lot larger. I'm going to crop that all the way so that I don't see any of that um, white part in behind. So now it's taking up the whole length and width of my page and I'm not seeing that white background at all. I'm now going to go back and I'm going to search for some torn paper. And maybe I'll add in there vintage, vintage torn paper. And I'm going to add this one to my workspace and I'm going to turn it around like that. And again, I'm going to place this on my workspace like that and I'm just going to resize it like that. Now you can also layer more designs. So here is another one. And I'm going to take that and again, I am going to um, layer that on my workspace. And I'm just going to bring that in behind that other page. So I'll go to position and layers and I'm going to move that lighter paper right to the back. I'm now going to go and I'm going to look for some water color trees. And I'm going to search for some kind of a tall tree, maybe something like this. And I'm just going to put that right on the side like that. And I'm going to make it a little bit lighter in color so it's not so opaque. Let's now layer some notes on our page by going into elements and let's search for vintage note paper. And again, we can start to layer different types of notes no paper here. And I'll take this one too and I'll place it down here. And I'll grab this one and place it here as well. Now, if you want, you can actually bring the tree in front if you want it to overlap those elements. So here's what that would look like right there. And if you want to make the tree smaller, then you can just crop it like that. So this is the second example of a junk journal page. We're going to go ahead and we're going to create a third one. And for this one, I'm going to search for vintage rose paper. And I'm going to place this one 
on my workspace. And I'm going to set this image as my background. Now I'm also going to go back and I'm going to look for some torn vintage paper because again I want I do want to add a little bit of uh, that torn paper effect so again I'll place some torn paper on the side here and I'll try and find some other elements that will go nicely with this So I'm going to place that on my workspace and I'm just going to flip it to the other side and I'm going to make that a little bit smaller and I'm just going to place that there like that. And I'm also going to place this star, this stamp on my workspace like this. And let's place some more roses and let's flip that like that. And we can rotate it as well. And I'm just going to stick that in behind those other roses. So I'm just going to go to position and I'll just move that in behind like that. Now I want to add another like lighter torn paper in behind there just to give a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to search for vintage scrapbook. And this looks like a nice piece of paper to just leave right on our workspace like this. So I'm going to leave that here like that. But I'm also going to keep searching for um, other elements to place on our workspace. So as you can see, um, as you're searching for elements, other elements are going to come up that you're going to want to use. And you can just layer them as you need to. So I'm still searching for a piece of white paper that I can put over there. So I'm going to come back up to the top and I'm going to search for some uh, torn vintage paper. I'll use this one right here. So if you're looking for this one, what you would look for is paper, scrapbook, vintage, torn, piece. Those are the keywords to find this one. So I'm just going to rotate this like that. And I'm going to place this in behind this brown piece of paper. And again, I'm just going to crop it a little bit, but I'm going to move it in behind like that. And I'm going to go to position layers and I'm going to bring it all the way to the back like that. Now, I don't necessarily want it behind the map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the map and I'm going to just bring it in behind. that element. So now it's in behind that element. And uh, I'm pretty happy with that um, as it is right now. Um, and if you don't want anything, you think it's just too busy, you can always just delete it out of the way and that will be fine. Now I'm just going to add a couple of more um, roses. So I'm going to come up here to vintage roses in my search bar. And here is one, so I'll just put that, you can just put that right up there just to give it a little bit of contrast or we can put that here, make that a little bit bigger and we can actually move this over here just to give a little bit of balance. And if you want to add some shadows, you can click on any of the items, you can go to edit 
you can click on shadow and you can apply a glow or a drop shadow like that and that will give it a little bit of contrast. I'm going to copy that style and I'm also going to apply it right here so that we can see that shadow too. Now before we go, I just want to explain Canva terms and conditions with regards to selling any type of designs on different sites like Etsy or Shopify. Number one, you always need to make sure that you are creating original designs. You cannot just download one element that does go against Canva terms of service. You have to make a design your own. You have to be layering elements so that uh, you're creating a brand new design. And when someone purchases your products, you must lead the buyer back to Canva to, via a Canva template link. So you might want to just add instructions on what to do after they get the Canva template link, how to download it, how to print it. So that is pretty much how we would create some junk journal pages. If you like this tutorial whatsoever, don't forget to press that like button and subscribe. And if you want to learn more about Canva, press that join button that's next to my channel name. I go live every week to teach my adult learners what they want to learn. So I hope to see you soon. For now, my friends, I will say bye bye until next time.